Good day, dear children. Today, let's learn a new poem, Keeping Quiet by Pablo Neruda. Neruda is a Latin American poet born in Chile. His poems are full of easily understood images which make them no less beautiful. He won the Nobel Prize for Literature in the year 1971. His writings are simple, wherein lies their beauty. The poem was originally written in Spanish. The essence of the poem is based on introspection. He feels that self-analysis or looking into one's inner self is important for us to be at peace and create a feeling of mutual understanding among human beings. I would say that it is a deceptively simple poem which has familiar and simple images. But as we delve deeper into it, it unfolds myriads of meanings. Now let's take a look at the poem. Let's get started. Now we will count to twelve and we will all keep still. Those are the first two lines of the poem. The poet asks humanity, we refers to humanity, to count numbers from 1 to 12 and remain without moving. He wants us all to be calm and quiet. Neruda's choice of number 12 has various references. It is significant as it indicates the dial of a clock with 12 markings which measures time. It also refers to the 12 months which fill the year and also the 12 zodiac signs that are the regulators of destiny. The poet has brought dissimilar elements within the limit of his call for stillness. Stanza 2 For once on the face of the earth, let's not speak in any language. Let's stop for one second and not move our arms so much. Here again, the poet requests everyone not to speak in any language because language creates barriers. It can also mean verbal conflict. So the poet urges everyone to keep quiet, be still at least for one second and stop all physical activities. Take a look at the last line, not move our arms so much. Underline the word arms. What does it mean? It implies moving arms or hands either to signal, to fight or to argue with each other. Another meaning is weapons. So when the poet asks us not to move our arms so much, he means or he implies that we should stop all physical activities and also war. The literary device used here is pun, P-U-N, which exploits the maximum possible or different possible meanings of a word. It would be an exotic moment. Without rush, without engines, we would all be together in a sudden strangeness. The first line is an explanation of the beauty of stillness and silence. It would be a special moment of inactivity without rush or without any hurry where there is no functioning or working of engines or movement of vehicles. Everything is halted. When Neruda proceeds to say we would all be together in a sudden strangeness. He fosters a sense of brotherhood. Once all our activities and movements are stopped, the world will come together. This moment will be strange since the world has not seen or experienced such a moment before. It would be a rare and a different situation altogether. Next stanza. Fishermen in the cold sea would not harm the whales. The poet says that the fishermen will stop 
harming whales this means he is urging everyone not to harm the animals or not to exploit nature giving the example of whales which are being hunted for the purpose of food or trade and the man gathering salt would look at his hurt hands the man gathering salt would refer to people involved in the day to day activities to earn their livelihood he asked all of them to stop their activity and see what they have done to themselves this is called introspection or self analysis so that they will be able to examine whether they have actually achieved or lost this is in order to understand see and feel and gauge their achievements if you take a closer look at the last two lines you will get to know that the man gathering salt is a representative of the entire human race who is behind nature exploiting it to the maximum to gain material comforts without realizing that he is actually causing harm to his own self that is inferred in the line his hurt hands so indirectly exploitation of nature results in exploitation of or damage of human race the next stanza is a plea to the entire humanity to stop all kinds of wars those who prepare green wars wars with gas wars with fire victory with no survivors so here those who prepare green wars green wars indicate war against nature or environment it can also mean exploitation of the green wealth of nature by deforestation mining or other similar activities war with gas indicate war using chemicals war with fire fire refers to arms and ammunitions or weapons what is the net result of all these wars victory with no survivors that is no one will be there no one will be alive to enjoy the benefit of the victory would put on clean clothes and walk about with your brothers in the shade doing nothing put on clean clothes mean let's all adopt a new approach to life and possess a pure mind realizing that killing so many people is not a victory he wants us all to be united as one as brothers promoting peace and harmony now next stanza what i want should not be confused with total inactivity life is what it is about i want no truck with death here the poet clarifies that he doesn't want anyone to be non active when he asks us to be quiet for one second he actually is asking us to do something that is self analysis and it should never be confused with total inactivity life is something which should be lived in its fullness and he doesn't want any relation or any association with death total inactivity would mean death and the poet is totally against being inactive when he asks us to introspect next stanza if we were not so single minded about keeping our lives moving and for once could do nothing perhaps a huge silence might interrupt this sadness of never understanding ourselves and of threatening ourselves with death again the poet pleads that we have to be single minded and keep keep moving along with the pace of life and remain for once to think about ourselves to know where we are actually heading to if you are not involved in such an activity what will happen to us a huge silence will block us will stop us and sadness will consume us 
what is this sadness which remains so prominent in our lives? The first one is not being able to understand ourselves and the second one the fear of death or threatening ourselves with death. So this huge silence can remove the sadness from our lives. Next stanza. Perhaps the earth can teach us as when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive. Here the poet gives us the picture or image of earth to explain to us how we can be still alive when we are dormant or inactive. Earth undergoes several changes. The changing season is a classic example for this. During winter, you find that everything freezes and life becomes still. Earth seems lifeless at that point of time covered with snow, but there is life beneath it. When the spring season comes, it brings lovely flowers and a new life is give, given. Does it mean that earth had no life when it was covered with snow without any greenery? No, it harbored life beneath it and that particular point of silence gave it all the energy to come colorful during the spring season. Last stanza. Now I will count up to 12 and you keep quiet and I will go. The poet has passed on the message that keeping quiet will lead to a better understanding of oneself. And he asks all of us to pause for one second and count till 12. He walks out of the scene, allowing the reader to do the exercise at his own level. The whole poem can be summarized into five main points. The first one, the poet has emphasized the need to introspect and bring in the spirit of brotherhood among the people of the world. He wants people to stop all activities till he counts 12, that is a short period of time. Second point, these moments of silence would be strange because in our mundane life we are working towards achieving selfish goals without considering others requirements and emotions. Hence this would give us an opportunity to introspect. Third point, man would get an opportunity to realize how he is destroying nature and how he is harming himself. Fourth point, futile wars against man and nature would be arrested and a new feeling of unity would be experienced. Fifth point, the poet does not want us to mistake his desire for inactivity as a state of uselessness. He wants man to learn a lesson from the earth. The earth which appears to be inactive is full of life. The poem finds relevance in the present scenario when man is being continuously exposed to the man-made and natural disasters. It's high time that we take a qualitative break and analyze where we are actually heading to. This is what the poet wants us to do. Thus we come to the end of the poem. Thank you children.